Here's something you may not be aware of. The world is running out of antibiotics. That is according to a new World Health Organization report. The WHO report says there aren't enough new drugs being developed, especially for serious and drug-resistant infections like tuberculosis. Researchers warn that most of the antibiotics that are preparing to go to market are really just modifications of existing antibiotics. So Dr. Sarah Pauline is a microbiologist. She's with the WHO, and she contributed to that report. She joins us now from Geneva. So help us understand, doctor, there are not enough new new drugs coming to market that can combat these new diseases that are popping up. That's what it is? Yes, exactly. That's correct. Um, what we found, of course, because uh, resistance has been emerging and really spreading tremendously quickly, it is a natural phenomenon that bacteria do develop resistance. But our pipeline, unfortunately, is not able to keep up with the development of resistance and partly it's also due to market failure there's less incentives to develop new antibiotics scientifically it's very challenging and if you just look at a new for example a tuberculosis treatment we've only really had two new antibiotics come to market in the last 70 years so it shows you what the situation is and we are already starting to face really multi-drug resistant and uh, ultimately untreatable infections such as gonorrhea doctor when you say that there is no incentive to develop these new drugs, these new uh, medicines, uh, do you mean that there isn't an incentive, a money factor here? Is this, is this what we're talking about, the economics of it? Uh, yeah, I think that's part of it. So the return on investment, of course, is not as high, for example, than treatment for to treat chronic infections. And also the science behind it, the pure science to develop truly innovative new antibiotics in particular for our critical pathogens, gram-negative pathogens, for example, to treat a urinary tract infection is very complex. So I do understand partially why there is so little, but a lot of it is that there is not enough investment in this area. And, and doctors, just a follow-up on that, is that also because, let's face it, a, a lot of these uh, these diseases, these strains that we're seeing are happening, happening in uh, countries and in populations where they, they're poor. They're poor. There's mm. a lot of poor people. These are poor countries, and they don't have the capabilities of doing it themselves. Uh, I'm sure if there was a way to develop a drug to prevent hair loss, that would get a lot of investment, right. but something right. like this doesn't. Tuberculosis is not quite as sexy as Viagra. Absolutely, and I think that's really a crook of it. Um, and also, unfortunately, in a lot of our low- and middle-income countries, we don't yet have the laboratory capacity to really understand the full issue. And as you might have also seen in our report, what we also really are lacking is oral formulation, so tablet formulations of new antibiotics. And this is what is really critical for use and access in low- and middle-income countries. So in talking about this, which infections concern you the most? Where do you think the real danger is? Well, we recently uh, launched another report, which is of our priority pathogens, um, which showed those pathogens which are most likely to develop resistance and really spread. I think that's also one of the things we're critically um, concerned about. And so these are gram-negative uh, bacteria that as I mentioned, are very difficult due to complex cell walls, etc., difficult to develop new antibiotics. And so it's one that they spread very quickly, develop resistance, but equally it's very, very difficult to actually develop new antibiotics. But are there specific concerns like uh, uh, an antibiotic resistant tuberculosis or you mentioned gonorrhea? Are there certain diseases? Yes, uh, so we have uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, if you want to talk about bacterial names, Acinotobacter baumanni and Enterobacteriaceae, and a lot of those really cause urinary tract infections and very common infections, actually. And then, of course, we also have tuberculosis. We know that already annually we have 250,000 deaths from drug-resistant tuberculosis infections. And as I mentioned, if we've only had two new antibiotics come to market in the last 70 years, so this will become and is already a challenge. It's, uh, it's really disconcerting to hear this report from you, uh, from the World Health Organization, uh, doctor. Last question, I guess. Uh, how are you able, with the limited resources, able to combat the shortage? How are you able to help people who may have no other recourse if uh, these drugs aren't being developed? 
Well, we need to look at how do we preserve what we currently have, what are the antibiotics we have. And so what we're trying to do is work very closely with governments and international organizations to really use what we have appropriately. And so as an individual to always seek medical advice before taking antibiotics and then to follow the medical professional's advice. Dr. Sarah Pauline, thank you so much and thank you for the work that you do. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much.